Good evening to you on a night of international football and world championship boxing. It's certainly been nail-biting in the European Football Championship. Scotland still have a chance of making the finals. Wales are waiting on Germany's last two matches. But goodness, it was close in Group 7, where England and Ireland both fancied their chances. Jack Charlton's Republic knew that only victory over the Turks plus defeat for England and Poland would send them to the finals. They hammered Turkey 5-0 in Dublin a year ago with so much at stake this evening, could they do it all again? Highlights then from a thriller in Istanbul and we'll be hearing from the England camp after their vital qualifier against Poland. In boxing, Paul Hodkinson gets his second chance at the WBC featherweight title and if he wins, the first man on the phone could well be our studio guest and British champion Colin McMillan, who fancies a crack at the crown himself as soon as possible. Well, we start with that fight and hear from Colin in a moment. It's Hodkinson's chance tonight for revenge for his only professional defeat when he failed to land the vacant world title against Mexico's veteran Marcos Villasana last June. It was a brilliant contest and Hodkinson was way ahead on points when the fight was stopped. What an exciting fight it is. Well, Reg, nobody's going to take too many of these left hooks. Those are tremendous punches from Hodkinson. His tactics are perfect at this moment. His chin nice and low, but he's applying the steady pressure. The good, powerful punches. A minute to go in the second. And Hodgkinson, as we can hear from the crowd, is having a bit of a ball here. He's picking his punches well. And he looks as though he's fighting the right sort of fight anyway, but he just, as long as he keeps bobbing, weaving, tucking his chin down, he's in with a really good chance of becoming the new champion of the world. Hodkins is really on top now, Reg. These are tremendous punches he's getting home with. Signs now, Reg, that Villasana are beginning, really. Yeah, it's going to go to over, come to bits here, yeah. Yeah, just suddenly, in the middle of this round, it suddenly looked as though Villasana, all these hard punches, and Hodkinson's pressure tonight, beginning to pay off. But he just must keep nice and tight. If Villasana comes firing back, he's going to have to catch these punches. Oh, he's caught Hodgkinson One, there. You saw the delay. His face two, winced as he got three, hit with those shots. Four, as if to say, I'm going to go five, down here. Six, come on, seven, and he's asking all right. But uh, referee, a good referee like that. He stopped it in this round. And I can't believe this. Villasana can't. He's fallen on the floor there. He doesn't believe it's happened to him. Fifth time up in the eighth round. Well, Villasana successfully defended his title three times since then. Hodkinson's fought only once when he won, but that was more than a year ago. Colin McMillan, can you reverse it tonight? Paul's definitely got the ability to win the fight, but um, he does tend to mark up. And um, if he does, obviously he's, he's going to lose the fight. He's going to have to change, presumably, his approach from last time. I don't really think Paul can adapt. I don't think he needs to adapt. The last fight, he, he fought the right kind of fight. And all he needs to do is do the same thing, but be a, a lot more um, defensively minded. The thing that I think he, he, think he should win. The thing is, you feel the longer it goes on, the less chance he's got, because villasana has got this incredible record, hasn't he, of keeping Obviously, going. He's, he's fought um, Azima Nelson, Jeff Fennig. He's fought a lot of good, good fighters, so um, he's um, got it behind him. So, briefly and finally, before we get into it, who are you going to go for? Um, I think Paul. He should do it if the cuts hold out. Yeah, and we're not biased here, are we? <laughs> <laughs> right, let's find out then if Colin's right as we cross to the Maysfield Leisure Centre, Belfast, where commentators Jim Watt and Reg Guttridge are waiting at the ringside. Well, that is the appropriate rocky theme then to introduce Paul Hodgkinson, one of the little toy bulldogs of uh, British boxing. Tucked away there among the promoter manager there, Barney Eastwood and Bernardo Checo, his trainer. And there is the first shot of the Liverpudlian. He's very much a, a favourite here in uh, Northern Ireland. And, uh, let's face it, it's, it's the big chance now to win the World Championship. And if he doesn't, it might be his last chance. So it's a revenge now for Paul Hodgkinson, whose face was uh, unfortunately swollen up so badly when he fought Velasana last time in uh, Manchester that he couldn't go on. 
I just can't see, he kept saying. Certainly he's got himself into top shape. The only problem is that uh, he hasn't been very active. Only one fight in 17 months, and that just might go against him. But Philosana is the most active of world champions. So Hoko, the nickname by the Scouters. Just a quarter of a pound inside, nine stone, and there's the, the rundown. The, the only defeat there is by Villasana with the one draw. And he won and vacated both the British and the European Championships. He's done everything that can be asked of him, certainly in the amateur ring. And that's the referee, Vince Delgado of Los Angeles. they have to warm up he's probably done that in the dressing room and here's the the reigning champion one of the iron men whatever weight they call him a featherweight but he's got a heavy weight chin i promise you that just an incredible fighter with 64 fights and he's had 36 rounds since he last fought hodgkinson while there's hodgkinson's only had three rounds the big problem with this fellow he tends to be the habitual low puncher, so we're hoping that uh, he doesn't get warned or even disqualified for that. 31 years old from Mexico, one of the most entertaining and toughest fighters around. There it is, 54 wins, and he's uh, last stopped in 1982. And the only time that's been, uh, well, it says a count out, but I think it was a cut I was in 79. And there's the referee, Vince Delgado, from Los Angeles. So this is right it, Paul Hutchinson now trying to avenge that very painful defeat, a fight that he was clearly winning in Manchester. But since then, only one fight that went three rounds, a mismatch in defence of a European Championship. It wasn't the promoter's mismatch, it was the European Boxing Union, in my opinion. So he might be just that little bit ring rusty. Oh, the first low punch and the first warning for Villasada. Yeah, well, actually, the, the first body shot he threw was a little bit suspect, too. The Jack's uh, two low punches, we know it's cost them their points in the past. But uh, Villasana seems to be trying to start a little bit quicker than he did in the previous meeting with Hodkinson. So I don't know if that's good news for Hodkinson or not. It's amazing, he's had points deducted uh, in previous championship fights. He, was, he won the championship at his fourth attempt. It's almost a record, that. But there's no use Hodgkinson now trying to be patient and back off. He's, he's got to take control of the fight early on, surely, because you can never avoid this fella all the time. That was the kind of wide sweeping punch that can cause cuts, Reg, the, the one that Villasana has just landed in Hodkinson's uh, right eye then, thankfully, no damage, but that was a wide sweeping punch. See, you have to feel sorry for Hodkinson, he didn't put a foot wrong last time and ended up losing the contest. So you wonder, what more can you do than a perfect performance and you still lose? I often thought he hasn't always got the praise he deserved, actually, Jim Hodkins, and he had a great amateur career, and then wins British and European Championships. We saw uh, Felizana's last defence, Jim, against Sapida, and he didn't look to us as though he'd gone back, because Sapida could fight a bit. Yeah, quite the opposite. Actually, come on stronger as the fight went on, and that is not a sign of uh, a fighter who's gone over the hill a little bit. He was a pro at 17 years of age, and within four months he was fighting 10 rounders, the Mexican. Well, the Hodkinson has started in the same fashion as the previous fight, Reg, which is the, the only way he's really effective. He has to come forward and let the, the, the punches flow. But it's, it's difficult. You, you don't want to change his style too much, but it would be nice to see him just think a little bit more of the 12 rounds and a little bit more about defence. So the 
countdown clock for the opening round. And Hodkin wants to carry on uh, as, he, as he started anyway the last fight. Let's hope that for his sake that he doesn't finish up in the same way. Dangerous punches inside there from the Mexican. Watch the way he brings those up. So uh, Bernardo Checker works at the corner there. We promote a Van Eastwood there just dabbing something on the eye there. Generally, the end of the swell. That's uh, a little arm that's left in ice and a uh, bit of. Uh, Information there in the second world championship, obviously. I like to see them bringing that, uh, it's not the ice pack as they used to use, they just need that in the swell, that doll's house iron that almost looks like that Andrew Dundee really brought into fashion, the trainer. Now, this man, uh, look, he's seen it all before, isn't he? You know, the, the old pro just like sitting in the office every day to him. Huge gum shield there, and the only protection allowed above the waist. Out for the second round then, and of course a 12 rounder. Nine stone Villasano exactly on the weight, and eight, 13 and three quarters Hopkins. Just box him, Paul, box him! And as uh, the scouts are calling out box him to Hopkins, it's not easily done. This fellow's been in with some pretty good boxers. Jeff Fennick in Australia, twice with a Zuma Nelson and with a split decision. And but for that uh, deducted point, he got a draw with Antonio Esparagosa, he'd have won the World Championship. But eventually, when it was vacated, he defeated Hodgkins. Alessandro has this knack, Jim, didn't he? You're trying to dictate the pace a little bit, slow it down when he wants to, step it up. See, you always have to be careful with Villasana. I mean, the, the last time we, we watched through this fight, Reg, we really thought it was one way stuff. And that was a, a terrific shot from Hodkinson. We'll see if that had any effect on Villasana. As usual, Villasana just quite happy. The tremendous chin he has. As I say, we felt everything was Hodkinson's way. It was just a case of hanging on in there. He was world champion. And then uh, Villasana turned it around, as he's done so often in the past. So no matter how well Hodkinson's doing, you're always a little bit worried uh, as uh, Villasana still something else left to come back with. Yeah, I was wondering whether he's going to the well just once too often, Villasana, but he hasn't shown any sign of it in recent times. Certainly didn't lose heart when he had four attempts to win it before Hodkinson came along. <laughs> Hodkins is still not having any trouble getting the punches home. So if you just keep his punches home and then just back out of hand's way, just pile up the points uh, and uh, cut down the punches coming his way. That's the way to do it. Just pop out that left hand. He keep keep Villasana occupied anyway, as well as pinching the points. First time here for this referee, Vince Delgado from Los Angeles. He's handled the Villasana fight before against Zanuga. Villasana with a right foot forward. Yeah, they've done the, the switch there just to make things a little bit more difficult if he can for Hodkinson. Some good right hand punches coming in though. And the Irish very much on Hodkinson's side, almost adopted in Belfast, but very much a scouser, even though they gave him the ring, gave him the, the Danny boy air. <laughs> yeah, there it is, last defence now against Ricardo Cepeda was in Marbella. And uh, look at the difference in the rounds there. You can have eight world champ, world title fights, I should say. I mean, it takes takes a bit of beating, doesn't it? They talk about the old timers. This fellow's as active as they were.
Jim. There's Hodkinson coming in in this replay. Well, that was a real clean shot that uh, Hodkinson got through with bang on the chin. And you would expect uh, most fighters that have some reaction, bang, there it goes, knocked his head away to the side, but uh, no lasting effect on Villasana. His chin is still in good nick, obviously. Seconds out. Round five. Round five. The quality punches are certainly coming from Hodkinson. He's, he's ramming them home. Good shot, sharp little punches. But you just wonder, does anybody have the power to knock this man over? Right back in uh, 1979 is the only so-called KO on his record, but we suspect that was actually a stoppage in Mexico. Villasana's features are exactly the same, Reg. It doesn't even low, look as though he's been in a fight, whereas uh, Hodkinson badly banged up. It's surprising they've done a good job so far at that corner, Jim. Well, now his nose is bleeding. Well, that won't cause him any problem. But we have to remember, Reg, it wasn't cuts that were the problem last time. It was the swelling over the eyes. I mean, cuts you can do something with. If you stop the bleeding, then that's fine. No problem, but the swelling and uh, you just simply can't see, that was uh, the problem. And there's not really much any corner man can do with bad swelling. she so has got to stand in there because that's the way he fights Hodkinson, Jim. It's no use saying, have a hit and run job. He'd win nothing doing that anyway. No, he can't hit and run, Reg, but I'd like to see him go in with three or four punches and then straight back out again. But Hodkinson lands a bunch of punches, but he just stays in there. If he could just maybe get the punches, Villasana is not really one of the sharpest uh, champions we've seen. So Hodkinson, if he could just get the punches home and get back out of there again. In and out, in and out. We don't want him to be hit and run, that's not his style. I don't know if that's a complaint about Hodkinson's head there. Well, it might have any sort of gestured to the referee there, Villasana. We didn't get him anywhere. Well, that's uh, good news for Hodkinson if uh, the stone man is appealing to the ref. Does you think Villasana's got a bit of damage in his... He's right, I looks like a cut, I think Villasana's cut. There seems to be a bit of blood in Villasana's right eye. Yep. There it is. Oh, well. It's a matching set now. I wonder if that was the complaint about the head, Reg. I didn't see any no, head I didn't clash. see any head clash there either. But he certainly complained to the referee, there was some blood in his eye. Oh, now we'll find out now whether... Villasana's seconds are as confident as Hopkinson's. Oh, this is a good exchange, Reg. This really is a good exchange. A bang on the chin from Hopkinson. Hopkinson definitely had the classier punches, Reg. Absolutely fearless, Hopkinson. He's standing right on top of him. Doesn't want to back off. Oh, what a much more accurate, good round there for Hopkinson. There was a sort of stumble there as Villasana got back to the corner. And the crowd really reacting to that. So twice, can you imagine, in 64 fights have been stopped. But uh, the last one back in 1982. Now the referee trying to get in there. There he is to have a look at this cut. Nasty position that it's in as well. But the referee's walked away. Well, that was the, the, the toughest exchange in the fight so far, Reg, and the good news was that Hodkinson was the boss throughout that exchange. That was a cracking left-hand punch. That's the one that started the action off. But uh, Hodkinson kept him pinned against the ropes. He had to take a few counters on the turn, but uh, Hodkinson really was the one who was the boss throughout that exchange. A couple of shots coming back. Didn't trouble Hodkinson. So that's after they've worked on it there, and uh, well, that's got to stand up for a, quite a bit now. We're only coming up for the sixth round. Ten seconds. Second time. Round six. So round six. And now they're both showing the scars of this hard battle for the WBC featherweight championship of the world. 
Mexicans never willing to concede anything though, Jamie. He really is a hard man. You know, he's, he's calling Hodkinson in there. Hodkinson started using the ring a little bit at the start of this round. The trouble is, Villasana's arms are so long, he's not an easy man to box at long range. Complain again about the head. Well, I don't know why, I've seen a lot worse than that. Well, for a man who's been uh, pulled up so often for low punches, Reg, it seems strange he's the one doing the complaining tonight. As I said earlier, it's always nice when your opponent uh, starts complaining to the referee. And you can't complain that it's a hometown referee. Los Angeles is quite away from Belfast. And Hodkinson is still setting the pace as he has from the first bell. And this is the way he likes to operate. Referee can stand back and really admire that, can't he? No clinching, toe to toe, almost head to head. I think we have to add that Hodkinson himself's got not a bad chin, Reg, because he's taken a few tonight, not shaken, and he's come back with better ones. Every bit as hard, in fact, harder, Jim, than the first one. I think this is a harder battle than the first one. Hodkinson had things pretty much his own way for a lot of the time in the first one, but that's not been the case tonight. Villasana has started quicker. Oh, beautiful! The left right. hook's there, Jim. Those I points. think he's going to do him without it. What guts he's got, Villasana. He's really rocked right to his boots there, and he was trying to trade back, but look, Hodkinson was well on top. Right, those punches that should be knocking a man over, those were perfect punches by on the target. Villasana should be on the floor. What a round of game for Hopkinson. Only now he can stay out of trouble, not be facially marked like that. As long as he can see, he can become world champion. For the second round on the turn, Hodkinson has looked the stronger, Reds, physically stronger. The trouble is, Jim, judging from the past, Villasana's recovery rate has been so exceptional as we come up to the end of the round. But what a good round, as I said earlier, for Hodkinson this is. Oh, low punches again, but ignored. <laughs> and what atmosphere it is. So let's have a word with uh, Dave Boyd McCauley, the world champion, with Gary Newman. Dave, we were worried about Paul getting banged up, but it looks as if he could win this fight now inside the distance. Well, I, uh, he's not as badly marked this time as what he was the last time. In fact, his face is looking pretty good compared to the last time, but I had predicted myself that he would win inside the distance, I would say, 9, 10, 11 rounds, because this guy here has got major problems doing the weight. In fact, when he arrived in Belfast 10 days ago, he weighed in at 9 stone and 12 pounds, and he did a, a, a gym session, and he finished at 9 stone, 9 and a half, so he's got major problems doing the weight, and, and as far as I can make out, he's been spending a lot of time in the sauna, and that can't do him but harm, and uh, he's, he's, still, he's a naturally strong guy, but he's going to need it, he's going to need all reserves, which I don't think he's got, because I think this is, this is his last. Seven. And now, is it a question of weight making, weight reducing in this cold climate? And as Jim Watt said earlier in the contest, that might be giving the reigning champion all these problems. It's, it's not only that, it's the punches that Hodkins is landing. Hodkinson is being smart, with him. he just won't give him any recovery time if he can help it. Yeah, well, Hodkinson has controlled most of the action, he's set the pace all the way, this is the way he operates best, and his punching is perfect, the timing spot on perfect. A couple of punches in the previous round really should have put in any featherweight in the world, I'm sure would have been over, but this fellow still stands. But Hodkinson is winning the rounds and he's not been banged up, so this is the good news that we were hoping for. I think he's still got a good chance of stopping the unstoppable here. Well, 
Asana still has that look in his leg movements oh. that he may have trouble at the weight. That, that was the signs early on, but he's just so naturally strong. The way he swayed uh, Hodkinson, fainted a little bit, and then let the left hook go was perfect. I don't think he'll lose heart by the fact that he hasn't had Velasana on the deck yet. He's happy enough to be getting those punches through and uh, romping home with the points anyway, and hoping this fellow won't be able to cope with him as the fight goes on. Just watch your heads, Delgado Sani. He's, he's a bit of a moaner, Velasano, considering uh, he's done plenty of rough stuff in his time. Certainly the low punching. But uh, to be fair, only in the opening round, Jim. Another perfect punch from Hodkinson. Minute to go then in the seventh. Velasano looks shaken then, Reg. What a gutsy fellow, though, Jim. He's, he gives an impression of being out on his feet and he grits almost through that gum shield, doesn't need to fight back. Well, Hodkinson has never been troubled by Villasana's punches, and that's been the, the real good news. So as long as, as the eyes don't swell up, everything looks uh, in place as it was before. there now as we come up to the end of the round well, Hodkinson has been the boss totally the boss for the last three rounds Reg he's looked so much stronger than Villasana They're doing a good repair job in that corner. Paddy Bird, who lives in Brighton, actually, in England, and uh, wrote to Barney Eastwood there. He didn't replay again, Jim. Didn't you have a great finish to the round there, Hodkinson? Yep, he's dominated the last minute of the last three rounds. He really has been the boss. Things are really going his way, and when the Villasana gets through with punches, they're not troubling Hodkinson. Very grueling featherweight championship of the world. With Paul Hodgkin, no doubt for Liverpool, really rising to this occasion now. And uh, well, on the way to get his just desserts. And then yet again, Villasana having a moan about the head clash. You know, I really can't understand that one. It's certainly not deliberate butting. I didn't even see a clash then, Reg. Uh, Villasana really has been complaining all the way through. And in this type of fight, I mean, you have to expect heads to be banging, and Hodkinson, the shorter of the two, he's going to come off better. Spectacular up there and more hurtful Hodkinson's punches. Yeah, Hodkinson has been throwing quality punches all the way through. Good short, tight little punches, bang onto the target. These are good solid shots, Reg. Come up with that old expression about I want to go out like a champion. That's what Villas Arm is determined to do. And it looks as though taking a long rest has helped Hodkinson, Jim, only the one fight in 17 months, and that was only three rounds. It's actually helped him. He needed it. Yeah, it's done, certainly done him no harm because he had no trouble finding his timing. Although Villasana is not the most difficult man to, to catch with punches. But the Hodkinson got into a groove very early, and he stayed in that groove. And he's, he's losing the toe-to-toe -to -toe battle right there, Villasan. We tried to open up first, and then Hodkinson outpunched him. Reggie, if you saw action like this in a Rocky film, you'd say it was exaggerated. I mean, this is fabulous boxing, just everything going in, both taking the punches, bang on. Well, Rocky can't fight, but these two can, Jim. Still 
got to watch that roughing up inside there. It's not exactly roughing up, it's just untidy. Because that's when Hodgkinson can, can suffer a bit of swelling and it's too late now. He doesn't want to run into any problems. I've really been impressed by the strength that Hodgkinson has shown tonight. I mean, I, I've always looked upon him you know, as a capable kind of young fighter. But he really looks like a mature a champion contender tonight. He really has never complained about a thing, just stuck to his job and uh, he's beginning to dominate. control inspectors are watching him they're really working on the Villasana here now they're rubbing legs and doing everything to pull him round okay Jim this is a bit more replay well, tremendous action in that round the punch is just going home full bloodied bang on to the target both taking punches but Hodkinson the sharper and uh, the more consistently landing the punches another good round for Hodkinson he's taken a lot of punches in this fight but uh, that's just the way he's, he's had to go about the job Seconds. Seconds. Round, round 11. Round 11. And Villasana taking every second he can to stay on that stool. Now, can Hodgkinson do this? When he defended a British championship against Peter Harris, he stopped him in the 12th and final round. Now, can he do this in a world championship? Look at that. That's, that's a bit contemptuous, Jim, for a, for a man who's taken a lot of stick in the fight. He's trying, to, he's trying to draw him into trouble, but he won't have it. And Hopkinson's kidding back to him as well. OK, if that's the way you want it, I'll fight my way and you'll fight yours, because I'm winning this fight. Yeah, good work by Hopkinson. He wants to do his own thing. He's not been drawn in. But he could have taken the point away from Villasana there, but he didn't. The referee has been very tolerant. Well, it's been a long time since he's warned up about low punching, uh, so that's probably the reason he didn't take a point. He hasn't been warning him throughout this time, but it was bad enough to warrant a point. Hodgkinson himself really feeling the pace now. He's really feeling tired. So the chance of the nickname Hoko for Hodgkinson. So the Scousers and the Irish out in force here at the Mayfield Leisure Centre in both parts. Wonderful atmosphere. And Jim, it's great to see Hodgkinson. Uh, final reference to this last fight of theirs now. At, uh, the eyes have stood up, the eyes have had, had it, as they say, uh, in politics. Yeah, well, it was damaged early, but thankfully the corner did a good job and uh, the damage didn't worsen. And uh, Villasana has got through with a lot of punches, so maybe it will not be a, a recurring problem in uh, Hodgkinson's career. The proverbial mile ahead, Hodgkinson. Now he's just got to protect that chin and not get that sort of stuff. He wants to keep away from any head, any head work that's going on. And some lovely fainting, slipping, and punching from Hodgkinson. Even this late in the in the fight, when most people have been hanging on. the final visit to the referee to remind uh, Hodgkinson it's the last round coming up and I bet he knows that so is it three minutes now 
to become champion of the world. So a wet towel to revive him now for the last and the final patching up for what seems to be the way out now for what's been a very good champion. And if he's had weight, weight making difficulties then it's uh, been a tremendous performance. So he almost looks like the Irish Rumpole there, doesn't he, the promoter, B.J. Eastwood. Ten seconds. Second two. Well. And final round. Final round. And Villasana was slumped on the stool there until he was called into the centre of the ring now. Get the impression that he might be resigned to the fact that he's blown the championship of the world. Yeah, he just looked exhausted in there. I think he was wishing it was the end up there in the last round, not the beginning of it, just looks completely exhausted, but he'll just drive himself on as he's always done. And the chance again for Hoko, the nickname for Hopkinson, of course. <laughs> I like that, even his quarterback are waving the crowd on there to shout it at you, but they're not doing the fighting. I don't think he needs any encouragement. He knows exactly what he's doing here, Paul Hodkinson. And yeah, at Hulk last, it looks as though he's got the glory that he's always been due. He just wants to keep his chin down nice and low and just keep uh, concentrating and keeping the punches coming home. Because his concentration is all he needs to become one champion. So the old here-we-go chance. And he does it. First Englishman for 91 years he'll be, because the other champions at this way have been Welsh and Bristol, and now Winston and of course the Irish Barry Midwigan. Podkins who wants to finish it in fine fashion. He could be standing off just using the jab, but he's back up close. So in about a minute and a quarter to go, Jim. Hodgkinson knows it, crowd know it, and now I'm sure that Villasana does as well. Don't forget, we've got to wait for the judges' cards here. The referee doesn't hoist the winner's hand automatically. Great finish by Hodgkinson. He finished as he started, Jim, throwing accurate punches. Yeah, it's been a great performance from Hodgkinson. As I say, I think this has been a harder battle than the previous one. He's coped with it so well. Yeah, the long rest, they've done him more good than harm. Wonderful performance. So, last half minute then. Yes, he's got a few bruises in battle there, but I tell you, he's... His heart's as big as anything, Hodkinson, and he's not only out-punched for Lozano, he's out-gamed him a bit as well. So there won't be a knockout now because the bell would interrupt it as we come up to the end, and surely Britain can salute a new world champion, taking time out just in this dying seconds. That's a bit ironic, isn't it, too? It's in order to do that, to wash the gun shield and replace it. As long as it's been knocked out, not spat out. And there's the bell. And they will invade this ring and knock Hutchinson around. I hope not too much. Needs a bit of security in there because he's, he'll be tired at the end of that. He won't want too much fuss made of him. He won't relax a little bit. All right, Jim, we're preempting the verdict. But, uh, well, surely could be no well, other way. Yeah, I can't see it going any other way, but uh, even before the verdict, uh, a great performance from Hodkinson. He was banged up early, suffered damage, but he didn't change his plan. He didn't try to go into the defensive, kept his thoughts together, his boxing, his concentration, kept the pressure on Villasana all the way through. It's possible Villasana had uh, some weight troubles, but I think he's had that for the last uh, couple of years, so that doesn't uh, detract from Hodkinson's performance. Dominated for a lot of the action and a, a lovely performance from young Hodkinson.
Ladies and gentlemen, this is the verdict of the judges. Judge Castellano scored it 109-119. Judge Gossman scored it 111-119. Judge Delgado scored it 114-119. The new champion, So he only lost one round on all three cards there, Hodkinson. A real runaway win but nonetheless a hard battle indeed. Brilliant, what a fight. Well, we'll hear the views of Colin McMillan and talk to Paul Hodkinson himself after the break. Hello again, if you just joined us, let me tell you we have a new world champion. Paul Hodkinson has won the featherweight title and here to talk about it with us, Colin McMillan. What a great fight. It's a cracking fight. And I mean, you've got to take your head off to Paul because um, he hit Villasano from cracking shots and he didn't, he didn't um, do anything. He came straight back at him and Paul was able to, um, to take it and control the fight. Now you predicted, you thought he could win anyway, but, but early on we thought Villasano was slightly in control, didn't we? I actually thought that come the, the later part of the fight, Villasano would come on strong. Paul didn't cut, and um, strangely, he came strong at the end of the fight. What was different then, do you think, from the last time? I don't know. I thought Paul got hit more in this fight than he did in the first fight, but I don't know why. He didn't seem to get as marked up. Well, it doesn't make sense at all, that, does it? I mean, the big worry was his eyes, and it's still, presumably, because, I mean, they've marked up before now, besides the last fight, haven't they, with Villasana? Yeah, Paul does tend to get marked up pretty easily, but um, today he wasn't a problem for him. How well do you think he actually boxed? I thought he was a very good performer, because to beat someone of um, Villasana's class. He's been in there with, with people like um, Nelson, as we said before, if Berg goes there. He's been in there with world-class fighters. For Paul to dominate the way he did was a great result for him. At what stage did you begin to think that Paul could become a world champion? Well, by about the seventh round, his um, the eyes were still under control. And from there, he looked as though he was, you know, he, he was the stronger of the two. So from about that point onwards, things started looking good for Paul. It's not bad for British boxing, is it? It's good for British boxing. Yeah. <laughs> OK, well, look, let's uh, get back to Belfast now and hear from our new world champion. He's talking here with Gary Newborn. Well, Paul, it's a different story this time. You're yeah. world champion. It was, it was tough, you know. Uh, I got worried early on, you know, when the eye went. But, uh, you know, I'm just delighted of won the featherweight champion of the world. All your camp and everybody was telling you to be cautious, but that's not the way you box, is it? I was surprised, really, because I didn't expect him to come out from, to me. I expect him to... It was just a slow start, you know, but he started pretty fast, you know, and as I say, you know, the plan didn't go, to, go towards us, you know. We got, got mixed up in, in early on, like, but uh, I was strong and, you know, was, the combinations were there. But I got worried early on when the eye went, you know, but I dug deep to get my teeth and I hung in there. It's not a great sight, but it's not as bad as it normally uh, is against Villasana. I don't see it. Pardon? It's not, I'm telling you, it's not as bad as it no. normally looks. No, but, you know, it was early on the fight, and I got pretty worried, you know, about my corner. You know, they'd done a good job on it, and they told me it was all right, and, you know, and uh, I just went on and done well. Were you conscious of the fact that, that Villasana has had weight problems? He was yeah, stumbling he, around a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, there was a room where they had a few weight problems, you know, but, uh, you know, that's a problem. You know, I mean, I just... I just went, I don't, I don't know whether he's had weight problems for a long while, you know, but you know, he's just, he was a tough man. And Has it been a long 17 months after that terrible disappointment in Manchester when your eyes closed? Yeah, you know, I've, you know, I've, I was the young crown world champion, you know, and I was, I was just delighted when, you know, BJ got me the opportunity to fight for Phil Island again, you know, I knew it would be tough, like, but I knew I had the ability to class. And so what happens now that you're world champion? There is a lad watching in the London studio called Colin McMillan, who's the British featherweight champion. Well, you know, I'm the world champion. I feel you know one, you know. I'll be, I'll be prepared to fight anyone, you know. But, you know, Colin's a, uh, he's a good fighter, you know, but I don't think he's, you know, he's met the same class as opponents I've met, you know. I think he's a while yet before he can start to challenge me. That's told you, hasn't it? <laughs> what do you say to that? Well, definitely, we're looking for that fight sometime next year. And the fight I'm looking forward to very much. I mean, I fought Paul six years ago as an amateur, and he beat me, so I, I need to pay him back. Yeah, but I mean, he obviously doesn't rate you, or he says he doesn't. He said he, rate, he rates me, all right. I know he does. <laughs> I tell you what, he didn't look too good, even so, did he, just now? 
He, he looked marked up. I think Paul's going to have problems whenever he fights with his eyes. And that's always going to be a hand, handicap for him. And obviously, if you were to go in against him, that would be your main target, would it? Well, I'd be hitting him all over, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's talk about yourself now. You've just won an award today, actually, haven't you? The Dave Crowley Boxer of the Year, right? I just found it today, yeah. It's nice, a great achievement again. I mean, it's been a great year for me. And to cap it off with this and all, it's a bonus. I mean, people are talking about you as, uh, what, the most exciting newcomer for, for years. Mm -hmm. How do you react to that? I've got a lot of good press for the last, um, last couple of months. Obviously, it puts a lot of pressure on you to actually perform to your best all the time, but you just got to keep training and doing the right things. You talk about um, you've had a good press, but actually you are quite low profile, aren't you? Although you're sort of flashy in the ring and everything. I'm a, I'm a kind of quiet guy. I don't like to, um, to talk too much. So um, that's what I want to keep. One thing that I think is particularly interesting uh, about you is the fact that you've got, what, seven O levels, three A levels. You could have gone to university, but you opted to go for boxing. Yeah. Why did you do that? Um, boxing is something I've enjoyed since I was 15 years old. I mean, too many people in life don't get the chance to do what they want to do. And fortunately for me, I've been able to do that, so um, I love it. Very briefly, what's next? Um, hopefully next year we're shooting for the Commonwealth title or the European title. And then after that, we're going to be looking for Paul. The sky's the limit. Colin McMillan, thanks for being with us tonight. Thank you. And good luck.